Okay. Hello, my name is Michael Wickerson, and I am working at Wickerson Studios, and I am most excited on this one-liner uh, Python book that's come out. And getting into Chapter 3, you're going to enter a range of data science, and you're going to have to get into using NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-Learn, and uh, a variety of other things. Now, I've struggled for the last little while trying to make this work, and you're going to notice something very interesting up here in my Maths tab. There's this little gh python remote instead of this python script this gh python remote this node is going to allow you it's an amazing system i'll show you all i can about it i'm very excited about it i'll pull down my scripts as well um, and i'll show you where it comes from and how i actually imported it uh, if i take a look right here um, just give me a second i think the first thing you're going to have to do is uh, look online for resources. What I did was I initially found this man. Uh, what a wonderful person. Yeah, my face is kind of jumbled up here. I'll throw it up here. But basically, he runs a 15-second video and says you can do it all. And, it's <laughs> and uh, so finding those 16 seconds was enough for me to realize that there was something online. And I jumped into it, and this is the... Uh, one version of it, uh, which is one that I was using for a bit, but I was having trouble with what was being inputted. It wasn't going in perfectly, so I actually went over and I found, I thought I had the other site, this one, uh, which is the fellow that actually brought it all into being. And I've got to get this face tucked around so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, but this site, which you want to walk through, the pypi.org project, you will want to go through and follow this to a T. And you literally have to go back, and I actually uninstalled my Anaconda, just install it again, and you have to make sure you're working on the 2.7 so you can use the Iron Python. So I figured that out. I did know I was using my Rhino 7, this is the most up-to-date version, and you want to load up your Anaconda, you're going to want to make sure your Conda path is working, because uh, you have to control a virtual environment. If you have trouble with this, contact me, but I literally have gone through and after highlighting Anaconda and starting with Anaconda, I've been putting it all through my, well, I did the command X. I, I'm using the PowerShell prompt, which actually gives you a lot of guides when you get into there. And I think I have a PowerShell prompt up here, uh, possibly here where I process everything that had to happen. So as I walk through, I hit a few errors. But you're going to want to go through and input and watch this whole thing feed through and do its magic as you go over top of this site uh, over here and follow it to a T. Um, you're going to load up your Conda, activate your Rhino remote, and you're going to notice on Anaconda there's a choice to work between beta root and Rhino remotes. You've got to get into that. This has taken me quite a bit of time today, and I have no teachers when it comes to data science. I figure this out online, on my own, in any forums that will help. I did do a, a configure install for 7, so you have to type this in, change 5 to 7. And I think I did relocate it into another area as well. And then you go to the repository. You can grab the most up-to-date JHPython remote uh, user object. And when you get used to using user objects, um, you then are going to pull them into your screen. It says, okay, find your location. That was the thing I was having the tr most trouble with, locating my Python interpreter, which is for Iron Python. I did find it. I'm happy to say I put my modules in. I can type in any module I want now from NumPy, the scikit-learn, uh, learn, and then you run that node, and all of a sudden, all your GH Python nodes can start to take things like NumPy. Uh, and there's a few examples here to get started. But the next section of this amazing book that I'm uh, that I'm translating into GH Python is going to require this for me to get into data science, for me to do things with numbers. Uh, and then I just kind of followed this example here and wanted it to work, and I still have problems occurring in my script and i'm sure it'll cause me a nightmare later on but uh i'm so very excited that this is actually happening uh let's just click through so i went through gh python rhino remote is where i have to track it for my libraries so i can go in here and i can grab where that source is um uh that was what was uh making sure everything was running fine i think here is where i was uh you can see my gh python script I've got two in here. One is just the test, test NumPy to begin with, uh, and I have two of them here. Uh, the first one's kind of irrelevant. Uh, I'm not sure why I still have that there. It's not necessary. 
uh, probably because I didn't save it. Um, we'll hit test. It should still work. I have a traceback problem, probably because I was using my first one and my second one. Yeah, I was using my SC there, and then I wasn't using my SC. So let me go back, put in those other two since they were working fine when I did that. Um, test that script. Go to false, go to true. Oh, I hope it runs. I hope I didn't mess it up. Did I mess it up? Um, hmm. Better pause for a second. Had a little trouble there. I just had to reset my Python node. I just had to click it off and then on again. I changed a little bit here and got rid of the redundancy of writing it again. But you'll see basically it's working well to run NP as uh, SC, which is the shortcut for script context, and go through sticky and get my numpy and get my RPY, which I actually RPY is used later here uh, in a range. And these are things I'm going to learn about in data science, but you can see right there I'm running remotely. This script is working, which wouldn't normally run if you wrote this without this ghpython remote. You would not have access to NumPy. And I think the things I took out, sadly, and I might have to rechange it, and this might jam it up again, was what was the other information that I wanted to put in there from the sample? They suggest uh, scipy and matplotlib library, and then matplot library dot uh, p y p l o t plot and uh, i'm going to put those in and see what happens here i'm going to go back turn it off turn it on and i think i'm still running fine if i test that no that's where it jammed up i'm going to hit ok and close it and i'm going to stop it and start it again and then i'm going to open this one up and test it and it jams up so there's something that goes funny when i do that could be that I brought in the modules. Let me try it without this modular because it was working. There's something going on with that. Uh, let me go back into here and test it. No, I guess it doesn't need those other libraries because they're not being brought in. So I'm just going to play it safe with this one. Open it up again. Hit OK. Sorry. Hit uh, Test. And that's where oh, I have to probably reset it. Run it again. And I think, there we go, it runs with NumPy. So I was having trouble with it with too many uh, modules coming into it. I'm not sure why that's it. I do have some errors over here. It's not running as smooth as it should, but it is working with NumPy. So I will try and remedy this as I go. Um, there you can see it's uh, it's got its little bug. Uh, it's, it's debugging, the debug, debug, all these connectors and ports. So I'm most happy that I've got something going. Uh, I can do things in here now that I couldn't do before with data science. Uh, I can use NumPy, I can use RPY, and that's a pretty simple one-liner script, which we're going to explore more and more, and we're going to go into the basics of basic 2D dimensional array arithmetic, which is something I was not doing in the ghpython nodes up until this point. So I hope you're excited about this. If you do need help with this, contact me. Uh, you can get these scripts, and... I'm not going to convert any of these over, maybe this one just to show. Well, this is the first intermediate, so let's jump in here and say this is, uh, this is the first test. So we'll go in here and we'll make a user object. We'll call it one-liners, liners, uh, and we'll call it intermediate, uh, intermediate scripts. And this one will start as test script, test uh, range. And we'll call that one 001, which is where we were going. Uh, and we'll take that data and hit copy and here. And you can see how we are literally going from what I was doing earlier on. Let me grab my desktop, uh, studio icon. Let's throw it in the, I should go to another color because it's getting dangerous. Uh, there it is. It's running fine. I'm going to go back into my file here, which shows all my script. And I made a mistake, uh, so I apologize. I have an intermediate script here, uh, which would be under I. And this is what happens when you don't. I got to delete that user object and have to do this again. Because what I want to do, and I'll show you, and just in case you make this error yourself, it's no problem watching me make it again. So what we want to do here is we want to say one-liners 
intermediate because that's the skill level now and we'll call it test range and we'll call it 001 we will copy that and let's not make the same mistake twice put it in here to the nickname that's not really a nickname it's just the same name i like to put it into the description and then you want to change it from basic immediate to intermediate we want a new category and that's going to make that a little easier we'll go back in grab our Wickerson studio icon you can make your own icons that's always fun and we hit go and there it is so that one comes in that's our first test the out is there and it should be processing we can get rid of the python one there you go i have my first user object at the intermediate level that uses the gh python remote let's go in here take a look what it was again uh i really am excited about this uh i don't know what to say it's been a struggle all day <laughs> and i hate trying to load in new stuff and i hate it when it's not as easy as just grabbing a user object uh, and sliding it into the user object library but that's it. We're going on to the basic two-dimensional arrays in arithmetic. I don't know anyone else who's excited about this stuff as I am, but there are a lot more people more intelligent about this stuff than I am. So lots of th things to debug through this as we try and bring in some different things. I'm going to start with that NumPy node and see where we go, uh, see if we have any more luck. So very excited. So stay tuned. Let me